Welcome to Wood Turning with Dick. Quick video of this nice long plank of bog oak with a natural crack in it that is only just clinging on down the bottom there somewhere. Out of this one plank, I'm going to make two wall hanging art pieces, both of them with a bowl in it. First off, I'm going to split that apart and show it through the planer. Gorgeous grain in it. The splits are going to work really nicely for what I want to do. Resin down this entire length. I want to turn a bowl in there, take all this bark back with the wire brush on the grinder like you've seen me do before. Resin down through here as well. These cracks run quite deep. Look at that. You might be able to see a pencil line I put across, which is where I plan to cut it. I want a bowl in the top. That bowl will be about so big. Then pour resin in this in this piece to join it together and then turn the bolt. Bosh, barely a cut mark there. <laughs> right, that should glue together quite nicely. It's a fairly thin blade on my table saw, so it's not too sad. And that is the distance I'm going for. That next job is to shore up the back, shore up the ends to be able to pour my resin in there. That should do just perfect for the back. Bearing in mind the resin is going to run right down this. So I'll go further over the board this way. Only needs to be very slightly higher than the wood. Because I'm really not planning on bringing the resin over the top here too much at all. Because I don't want it pouring over the sides. Glue those onto there. Make sure I get my gap right how I want it. Now I just need to wait for that to dry. And we'll see if it leaks. I did get some blood red. I did mix it with some water just to have a look at the colour. And whilst it is a kind of true representation of blood when it's mixed with the water, it's not what I want for this piece. That would be nice with some little light wood. For the bog oak, this red velvet, I think will be ideal. I'm going to mix up 250 of the part A. It's way too much, but it'll be nice and dark. Good stirrer, kitchen fork. <laughs> See, now that's more bloody. I like that. While I'm stirring that colour in, let's mix in some hardener. That is beautiful. In goes my red. Nice slow pour in. Oh, here it comes. I want it to splurge over a little bit just to go into that crack to the right there. Here comes the air bubbles with it. There it goes down into the crack. Just ease off for a minute, let that settle. Pour a little bit over this crack here. Let that seep into there. that down there for a minute let all those bubbles pop and do what they're going to do see if the level comes down a little bit further and then top up if i need to
Oh, there you go. It's got three days to cure. That is one reflective shiny surface. Look at all that. Twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> I've got these borders on here. I did have a bit of a leak, as you can see here. And yeah, I think I wasted quite a lot of resin. The bog oak has got lots of cracks and fissures in it. And I think it, it simply went down one of those and leaked in. But it happens. That's why I put a rubber sack around it to catch any resin that ran off. It did mean that I needed to top this up after it initially gone off and it spread. It's gone down a lot of these cracks here, which is what I wanted. And down the side crack here, that's where I think the leak stemmed from actually, because that's where it was lowest. Gonna trim up next to these and then run it through the planer to get rid of this. Very small increments because planers generally don't like resin. Successfully planed that off. It's nice and flat now. That side's still looking the same. Next job is I'm gonna turn a bowl in here. I'm going to glue that on the back after turning a chuck grip into it, centralize it to where I want it. And if you haven't seen me do it before, so I was all ready to glue that on the back of there, and I thought that would be great. I thought I'd just I'll cut the edges off that were on there so I could trial the attachments that are going on here and see how well they squeezed up, which is very well, I might add, albeit this one's that much higher. But that I'll take down a little bit further later and maybe just bring this up a little bit with simply some sheets of paper. We'll we, we work that out when we need to. But for the time being, when I take this off on the planer, after I've turned the bowl, I'm going to run that that way through the planer my planer's not big enough to run it that way, which is the way it should go through the planer. So I've got to make sure when it does that I don't hit this bit. Otherwise, it's just going to chew it up in the planer. Having put the planer away, I'm going to get it out again and just take this flat enough. I mean, we're talking millimetres. All mounted up, everything's nice and tight in terms of tool rest, so it's not going to jog into the piece. Because what I don't want to do is damage this surface where it's going to join to the actually, not that surface, this surface, or is it anyway? I'll, I'll work it out later. I don't want to damage this surface from where I'm joining, uh, or obviously this top edge, or is it this edge? One of those, right? Um, dig a hole out, dig a bowl, dig a hole, one of those. I think it's just the resin blunting my tool really quickly. I think it'll be a lot better as I come further out and not starting on the resin, which is blunting it. I'm gonna start from around here. Looks like bubbles, but it's not. It's just chipped from the bowl gouge. But even just this little bit is demolishing the edge on my gouge. So as I'm turning, I'm not just using the bit I'd normally use, I'm rotating as I come round to try and use as much edge as possible. Just watch and see. And depth wise, you can see it. I'm only down half inch, if that. Width wise of the bowl, I do want to be coming out about here. So, yeah, okay.
No, I think that size is good enough. I'm just going to bring this side down a bit. And a bit deeper. Nice gradual curve. If I can. Bear with me a mo. I just want to try the carbide on this resin. Just very gently come across and come out to this corner. See if it makes much of a difference. Ah, nice chunk off the resin there. Okay, not a good idea with the carbide. <laughs> Means the bowl's getting slightly bigger, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, not a problem. Tiny bit more. And yes, I just realised I'm a long way from the rest. But, I think that was my final cut anyway. That tiny bit on the corner would come out with sanding, and when I sand the top anyway. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit. This I will get with sanding as well. Sandpaper, here I come. Come back to you when I'm shoving some sander sealer on there. As I always do. Because I'm good like that. I'm good to you. So that's a 400 grit finish for now. I'm going to go all the way up to 3000 to make sure that resin is completely covered. And well, a bit clearer so you can see the nice pattern in the red. But we'll shove some sander sealer on the bog oak. Because every bit of wood on the inside of this bowl is going to get covered in gilding. Hopefully, champagne gold. And the title of the piece will be Tears of the Moon, because this is the red is supposed to indicate the, the tears. Piece of pre-cut hardboard. I planed off most of the hardboard on the back of that piece. That's all going to be sanded beautifully later on. A little bit of resin left on there. That I finished. It's got some sawdust in it at the moment and some resin and shavings from the planer. That goes there. And this needs to marry up to here. And this one needs to marry up to this side. Now I've not tied up this outside edge yet because if there is a slight disagreement in the meetings then I can cut it back with the wire brush on the grinder. This is, I think this is going to marry up really well. All right, I think uh, a dry fit is in order. The resin up through here and up through here is going to look up all this and this. It's going to look lovely as it spreads down across. Question is, do I drop some in here as well? Probably not, because I'm going to have the, the red over this side only. So I'll leave this as a crack. Good thinking. Richard, you're not just a pretty face. No, maybe not even that, but never mind. The joints look pretty good to me. Dry fit complete. Got some gluing to do. All right, that's glued up. 24 hours. I'll pour a very thin layer of resin, stop any potential leaks. I'll put it on a waterproof membrane, a rubble sack, and then we can get that line continued down there and down through here, and eventually get it through the sander, the big sander. Oops, my hardboard cover stuck to it a little bit, and uh, huh, oh well. Not too important, a bit there and a bit there, just ripped away. Right, I've got way too much here, but it's slightly less than 25 mil. I'm gonna try and get down this crack. I think I've got down all the way through these cracks. It's not leaked out the sides. So yeah, let's do the next pour, the last pour, essentially. It doesn't matter if I spill it over the edges, it all get sand off late, sanded off later anyway. Still going to pour it from a good height, a thin stream, so there's no air bubbles in the resin itself. 
Some air bubbles will leak out of the wood, but if I do the pour just proud of the of the top, shouldn't be too sad. Here comes the colour. Let's get that crack over here. Got some cracks over here. I don't need to get filled up. Let that soak down into that crack for a minute. I'm just going to take that down, take that down, tidy up that edge with my grinder on the wire with the wire brush, clean all that up, then it's off to be sanded proper. What am I doing? What am I doing? I might as well cut that off. No, the resin never got in that one or that one. It's back from having run through my friend's industrial sander. I've got a little bit of a gap here, which is actually a good thing because there's also a gap on the other side, which I need to sort out. The, the back isn't important. I'm going to smooth this through to whatever grit I'm comfortable with. You can't see through the resin, so it doesn't matter. So literally I'm going to get it nice and even, get rid of this little bit of resin over this side using some 120 grit, probably 120 to... 180, 240. Put my French cleats on there, which you've seen me do before, so I'm not going to talk you through that. And then, again, should have run it through a few more passes, just to get rid of the last of these air bubbles. But I should be able to take that out with a sander. And what I was saying about the gap at the back is that I've got a little gap here as well. So by doing the back first, I can have a little practice, see what looks best. I'm thinking super glue down there, and then some of the dust that I work up with the oscillating sander, or maybe just manually with some a piece of sandpaper up and down this section, just to get enough dust just to poke in that, that little gap along there. I'll time lapse the back and possibly even the front, and I'll come back to you when I've worked it to a sufficient finish. So that's a thousand grit with the oscillating sander. It's not clear resin. I don't need it to be see-through. Uh, I've got a nice finish on the inside of the bowl here. I think I'm going to do a slightly different finish on here. I've got some old French polishing wax, which I'm going to put straight onto the wood rather than sand sealing it. But just before I do that, I'm going to do a quick go over with a 3000 grit pad. Going to use the same furniture polish on the bark and on the ends and then across to Lenore for gilding. She's going to hate me because she's going to gild all the wood in this bowl and not the, <laughs> not the resin. It's not come up too bad. I haven't gone crazy with the polish on the resin on the top surface here because I didn't think it needed it. We're not going to have to see through it. So yeah, I mean, there's polish over the bark, there's polish over the ends. Just gonna shove it in a box. Obviously, I made it behind the scenes. Duh.
Tears of the Moon is all finished. Looking good in champagne gold. It wasn't all that difficult, Richard. I managed to get everything gilded and tidied, as you can see. It's looking beautiful. We're ready to go to the show this weekend. I'll finish up any last minute tidying bits that need to be done then. So hopefully you're happy with that and let us know what you think in the comments.